Welcome to Napalm Records Berlin office where I have Alien Weaponry with me. So guys, first things first, you played your debut European gig last night here in Berlin, Cassiopeia. So how was it? Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Like, honestly, I don't think it could have gone any better. Like, um, uh, well, uh, yeah, we, we had the slight hiccup during one song we lost broke a string, but we, we, I think, handled that really well. And it was a really good gig overall. So I'm very happy with the way that went. And it's an awesome way to start off our European tour. Yeah, I guess I wasn't, I mean, we came to Europe not really knowing what to expect. And, um, yeah, I think it exceeded our expectations. And, yeah, it was great fun. I think for our first show in Europe, it was, you know, really good, you know. Um, the crowd, you know, took a little while to warm up, but once they got into it, I reckon, you know, it was a really good gig. And, yeah, we pulled through some technical difficulties, but, you know, it was good. Well, yeah, that's the Berlin metal crowd for you. But uh, yesterday's gig also marked the start of your first, of course, European tour that extends to uh, September. So what are your expectations for this tour? Um, honestly, we're, we're not coming into this with any sort of preconceived notion of how it's going to go. I think we're going to just take it as as it comes to us, you know, um, whatever happens, happens, and hopefully it's amazing. Um, but yeah, any, anything can happen, and, you know, we'll have a better understanding of how it should go once we've finished this first one, and we come back next year, and then we can have that expectation of how it's going to go, and, you know, what's going to happen. I'm really looking forward to playing some of the festivals, like Metal Days, you know, I'm really looking forward to just experiencing like the European metal scene, you know, because it is, you know, from what we've heard and also last night we experienced that it's quite different from New Zealand, so I guess we'll just see how it goes. Yeah, I mean, what Lewis said, the festivals are really what's getting me excited. Um, metal days especially, because we got quite a bit of time to just kind of hang around and have a look at what it's like here in Europe. And yeah. I mean, it's going to be amazing, I think, but we're hopeful. Yeah, you're also playing in the legendary Wacken open air on the yeah. first go, so uh, yeah. what are your thoughts yeah. on that? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's quite crazy, actually, because that's been a dream of ours since we, the three of us, started as, you know, Alien Weaponry is, is this lineup. so that's, that's been our goal right from the very start, to be playing at Wacken, so yeah. to be finally doing it is just unbelievable. Okay, so uh, yeah, last night's gigs, gig was the first one in Europe. So was there a big culture shock? Is it that much different? Um, I mean, I don't know German, so I was kind of a little bit like wondering whether the crowd could understand me. But you know, yeah. uh, no, normally in, I think Berlin is pretty good for you know you're speaking English. And most people will be able to understand you, and you're not going to have too much of an issue. Maybe next time I come back, I might learn a bit of German just so that... Well, we've, we've learned to like a very little bit. So, you know, we can I, I, I tried to learn people. some, but then like we got busy and then I just forgot it all. I so. started learning um, while we we're actually recording the album. When was that? Late last year. Yeah, I've forgotten it all. <laughs> During December. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you do go into shops and then people start talking to you in German and then you kind of awkwardly have to be like oh i only speak english and then they they kind of panic because you know maybe they're not so good at english so you know it's yeah. no, it's it's interesting it's interesting but it's like awkward and funny uh all the festivals you're playing this summer any bands you want to see in those festivals <laughs> um trivium at some trivium. At, at summer breeze definitely yeah. we we'll want to be seeing and uh <coughs> Judas Priest, I mean, we saw them when they came to New Zealand and played Westfest, so, um, and they, they were awesome there, so I, I think I want to see them again, you know, they have an awesome live show, um, yeah. yeah. For me, it's, for me, it's Trivium as well, because when I met these guys, um, Trivium was kind of the metal band. That's you know, how we introduced you to metal. Yeah, like, I didn't even... I hadn't really heard of metal before I met these guys, so when they introduced me to Trivium, I really enjoyed it, and that's what got me into metal. So, good to see them live. 
Yeah, um, also there's a new band, well, that we kind of started listening to a little bit before we started um, this tour, which is called Arch Enemy, and um, yeah, they're pretty interesting and different, so, you know. And they're pretty big over here. And we'd be keen to see them live. So Keen to see everyone live, you know, check everyone out. It's just that experience, I think it's, um, you know, part, part of the reason, um, at least for me, that um, I love festivals so much is that you get to see all these bands that you maybe haven't seen before or haven't even heard of so um, yeah that, that's just just going to be all part of it I think Okay let's talk about your debut album uh, Do? Two Do? Do? Yeah. Do? Okay Released just last month and it's got an uh, rave reviews but uh, how would you describe the album in your own words? Every song on the album is, I guess, something that means a lot to us, you know, because when, when we write songs, we write songs about things that we feel strongly about, so it is very diverse in that some songs are about things that have happened a long time ago, and then other songs are about really recent and current, you know, issues, but yeah. It's each, each song is like a little piece of our, of our mind. That we've we've put into a song so um. I think we're all really happy that we spent the time and all the resources as well as we could have and we didn't just take the easy road with recording it as well because we could have done it real quick and have it out and it wouldn't be perfect it wouldn't be how we, we wanted it to be so yeah I mean I think we're all really happy with every song that's on there and yeah it was a real fun experience recording it and yeah I guess it's kind of a time capsule because in a couple of years you're going to look back and it's going to be Alien Weaponry 2018 you know yeah. so it'll be cool okay in addition to English you also use the Maori language of course in your lyrics uh, uh, how did you originally decide to use Maori culture in your music it wasn't really it was I wouldn't say necessarily by accident, but we didn't really plan for this to like blow up as much as it did. And um, I guess we kind of we kind of got onto it because some of our friends from New Zealand um, play in a band called Strangely Arousing, and they ska reggae band. Yeah, so they entered a competition called Pacifica Beats, and um, it's like a competition where you need to incorporate, you know, your indigenous language pacific language and stuff and instruments um into what you do and um they won the competition with a song that had a multi verse in it and um we thought that was pretty cool so we decided to write a song completely in te reo maori and um we decided to just keep it you know 100 metal and um we kind of didn't know how people were going to take it but you know people have embraced it really well uh, yeah, yeah, I think I read an article that might alien weaponry save the Maori language, so... <laughs> so uh, no uh, pressure. We don't know yet, but... <laughs> so, uh, how well do you speak it, can I ask? Um, um, I mean, for me um, and Lewis, we both started off our schooling at what you'd call a kura kaupapa Maori, which is uh, pretty much, it's a school, but you go there and you only speak Maori, so... Um, yeah, like... We, we started off our schooling speaking Māori all the time. And, and um, for me, when I left there, I left when I was about seven. Um, and I kind of stopped speaking for a bit. And then when I got back to high school, I, you know, I'd, I'd forgotten a lot of it. And so I, you know, the last three years of high school, um, I kind of, I started relearning and I've, gotten to a point where I can hold the conversation properly and understand pretty much most of what's being said. Um, you know, sometimes I'll, you know, I'm not quite fluent at this point, but it's it's enough to definitely write music with. And, um, yeah. I feel like Henry is probably the most fluent out of all of us. And yeah, um, on the road, I've been teaching both Ethan and Lewis. Yeah. I mean, we know all the lyrics, what the lyrics mean in our songs and all that. So. I feel like whatever you're doing to 
help you know the rebuild the Maori language because it, it is actually kind of dying in New Zealand and um, I feel like e- even if you're not confident with you know speaking it and stuff I feel like the only way to get better at that stuff is just by you know keeping on doing it so yeah there's a, there's a lot of people that are actually afraid to um, stuff up speak, speak it so they, they just don't bother with speaking it because a, a lot of people have difficulty pronouncing it because everyone in New Zealand pretty much speaks English so um, yeah it's just a thing where like people who speak English seem to have a very hard time um, speaking Māori so um, yeah I think a lot of people just do, they, they stay away from it because they feel embarrassed that they, they can't do it and not necessarily, I don't know, I feel like people, especially non-Māori people, feel like if they try and speak Māori, they'll somehow disrupt or offend some someone, but, you know, it's actually worse that they don't speak it because then, you know, it doesn't get used and the language dies out, so I feel like what we're trying to do is just, you know, make it known that speaking Māori is okay, and if we can have that not just in New Zealand but in Australia and also even maybe in Europe if people want to learn Māori you know they can go right ahead you know it's a good thing yeah okay let's uh, take it back to the music so uh, what is what is it about trash metal that you know caught your attention in an early age and you know young guys start to start their music career I mean for me I had before I met these guys I didn't know what metal was at all and it was kind of the the first metal genre that I ever looked into or kind of discovered. So, I mean, also early Alien Weaponry were very thrashy. And, um, yeah, these guys had a, already written two songs. And <laughs> if you wow, call them songs, songs. <laughs> if you call them songs, <laughs> they, were, they were thrash songs. And, you know, those were the first two songs that I had learned how to play on a bass. So that's kind of where I got my thrash liking from yeah well and we we kind of introduced you to metallica and stuff because you know at the time we were still um you know like listening to that early metallica me and lewis have like when we were young we used to be huge metallica fans and i mean uh, to a certain extent we still are but um, we've kind of moved on from just listening to Metallica, whereas when we were young, that was kind of like our main band to go to. And if it wasn't Metallica, it was like Rage Against the Machine or Chili Peppers or, you know, it's like it was still kind of like quite fast, kind of angry, you know. Pretty, pretty metal. Even, even yeah. Chili Peppers was... Yeah, I mean, I didn't realise it when I was a little kid, but I've always liked metal. So I remember playing this game on PlayStation 2 and um, had this, it was, it was um, playing Iron Maiden for the intro, it was SSX some game, SSX something, and I played this intro and I always thought it was awesome and I was like, what is this? I want to know what it is, but yeah, I kind of, I had no idea what it was and it was fantastic. Okay, um, everything must be a bit crazy for you guys at the moment. Uh, mm. People are saying that soon you might be the biggest band coming out of New Zealand. So uh, how do you deal with all this hype around you? I think we just need to try and, you know, remember that, you know, where we come from and also just that we're just like everyone else. I don't think we want to let this, you know, affect us in a negative way. Yeah. But it's important know, yeah. to remember that we wouldn't be here with the whole team and Napalm, Dust Machine, and Neil, and you know, all the people that buy our music and listen to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I think um, that's you know, I, I, I have the feeling it's a bit of a, a trait of New Zealanders. Um, you know, we find it very hard to take credit for anything fully, like, we always. Um, you know, it's we find it very hard to take compliments on anything, and so I think it keeps us down to earth and and a bit humble, and you know, making sure we're not getting big headed and stuff like that. So, which is yeah, really handy, I think. Sure, <laughs> sure. So, sure. do you have some uh, like made goals 
of your own? Like, where do you guys see alien weaponry in a couple of years? One of our goals when we first started the band was actually to be playing Larkin by the time I was 20. Um, Henry was 20. And um, we've achieved that goal, and I guess we've talked about this a little bit. Our next goal might be um, to be headlining Larkin, you know, in a similar kind of time frame. Or to be, you know, selling out arenas, or you know, we'd like to set really high goals, yeah, and then <laughs> yeah, at the time when we were setting this goal, it was yeah, like, oh, we're just like, yeah, like, yeah, it's like sure. no way that we're gonna achieve this goal, and we did, and we smashed it by two years even. So I mean, it worked for us once, so we may as well do it again. Yeah. Amazing guys, thank you so much and yeah, yeah. Uh, no, thank good you. luck for your tour. Awesome, well, thank you man. Thank you. Thank you.